Let's take a look at the fighter which revolutionized air superiority, the F-15 Eagle. The F-15 is a twin-engine, twin-tailed, fourth-generation fighter designed initially as a dedicated air superiority fighter. With an unprecedented record of over 100 kills to zero losses, it is hard to argue against the success of this legendary fighter. Having a service life measured in decades, this is the first of a multi-part series on the Eagle. Today we will be looking at the initial variants of the F-15, specifically the A through D models. Alright, now let's take a look at some specifications for the Eagle. By the outbreak of the Vietnam War, new fighters had developed a distressing trend of being larger and more expensive than their replacements. Examples of this include the F-86, the F-100, and eventually the F-4. Because of this, both the Air Force and the Navy were being pressured to adopt a common aircraft that could reduce costs and have common parts between the two services. This directive became known as the Tactical Fighter Experimental, or TFX program. The result of the TFX program was the F-111, and while the F-111 did have some redeeming features, ultimately it suffered from trying to meet different and sometimes conflicting requirements by both the Navy and the Air Force. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a dedicated video on the F-111. Oh, and before we move on, the Navy did take the TFX program in its own direction, calling it the VFX, which would ultimately produce another legendary fighter you may have heard of. More on that some other time. Alright, back to the F-15. By 1965, the need for a dedicated air superiority fighter was apparent, and after initial selection processes which included over 500 design concepts, it was found that most of the submissions were large and heavy, and not that much different from the F-111. There would follow a series of events and circumstances which would lead up to the perfect storm culminating in the development of the F-15. The air war in Vietnam was starting to intensify and providing the then accepted missile doctrine as inadequate. It turned out that missiles were not as reliable as predicted and large, heavy, expensive fighters like the F-4, which initially did not even have a gun, were vulnerable to smaller, more maneuverable and less expensive fighters like the MiG-21. The rules of engagement where targets had to be visually identified did not help out either. Additionally, a former fighter pilot turned tactician named John Boyd would team up with mathematician Thomas P. Christie to develop energy maneuverability or EM theory. EM theory emphasized, among other things, maneuverability and high thrust outputs as the keys to success in air combat. Revolutionary for its time, it is a design philosophy that still holds true today for fighters. Furthermore, around this time, a group which became known as the Fighter Mafia was advocating for a lightweight, inexpensive day fighter as they argued that a dedicated air superiority fighter was the key to victory. In their words, not a pound for air to ground. And finally, in 1967, the Soviets debuted the MiG-25 Interceptor. Codenamed Foxbat by the West, the MiG-25 was an incredibly fast, high-flying fighter. However, Western analysts mistakenly assumed that the MiG-25 was also very maneuverable and scrambled to catch up to the perceived edge in fighter design. All of these factors contributed to what would become the requirements for a new fighter. Twin engines, a top speed of Mach 2.5, a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1, and a max takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds. Four companies submitted proposals, and at the end of 1969, McDonnell Douglas was selected as the winner. 
The aircraft was designated F-15 and given the nickname Eagle. The F-15 would be powered by the now legendary Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines, each which produce over 23,000 pounds of thrust at afterburner. And while initially intended to be equipped with a 25mm caseless cannon, the tried and true M61 Vulcan cannon ended up being used after difficulties with a 25mm platform. Additionally, the F-15 made use of then cutting edge computer technology to reduce pilot workload, including a heads-up display or HUD. This allowed the F-15 to be operated as a solo pilot aircraft. Initially, the F-15 was delivered as a single-seat version and a two-seat training version known as the TF-15. The single-seat version would soon be redesignated as the F-15A, while the two-seat trainer version would be known as the F-15B. Introduced to the U.S. Air Force in 1974, the F-15A and B line would soon be upgraded to the C and D versions. The single-seat C and the dual-seat D versions added an upgraded computer core, options for conformal fuel tanks, an additional 2,000 pounds of internal fuel, and an increased max takeoff weight of 68,000 pounds. Introduced in 1978, these upgrades became known as the PEP-2000 or Production Eagle Package. F-15s would be upgraded again starting in 1983 with further upgrades to the computer core and expansion of the Tactical Electronic Warfare System which upgraded countermeasures and firmware upgrades to allow for more advanced versions of Sidewinders and AMRAMs. This set of upgrades would be known as the Multi-Stage Improvement Program or MSIP. MSIP production F-15s began appearing in 1985. The F-15 is armed with an internal 20mm M61 broken cannon which is capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute or 100 rounds per second. Additionally, the F-15 has 11 hardpoints which are located as follows. Four are semi-recessed under the fuselage and can carry either AIM-7 Sparrows or AIM-120 AMRAMs. Two are under the wings and each of these underwing hardpoints has an additional two stations. And lastly, a centerline hardpoint is also used. Weapons loadouts include combinations of AIM-9 Sidewinders for short range work, along with AIM-7 Sparrows and later AIM-120 AMRAMs for medium range or beyond visual range work. Aside from these air-to-air -air weapons, the Eagle also deployed a somewhat unique missile. The ASM-135, which was an air-to-air -air missile designed to be a satellite killer. The way it worked was an F-15A would mount a single ASM-135 underneath the center pylon and then perform a supersonic zoom climb to an altitude of about 38,000 feet, effectively acting as a first stage for the missile. The missile launch was then computer controlled which time the missile release. The concept behind an F-15 carrying a satellite killing missile was one of deception. A rocket launch to destroy a satellite could easily be tracked by the then Soviet Union. However, a single F-15 armed with an ASM-135 could theoretically blend into hundreds of other F-15 flights worldwide. The Soviets would not be able to determine which F-15 was carrying the satellite killer missile. The first test flight of the ASM-135 took place in 1982, and after a second successful test flight, it was decided to test the ASM-135 on an actual satellite. The target chosen was a retired P-78-1 solar observation satellite which was at the time in a 345 mile orbit. The launching aircraft was named Celestial Eagle and with USAF Major William D. Doug Pearson at the controls, the satellite was destroyed by kinetic energy in the 1985 launch. In case you're wondering, the closing speed of the missile was around 15,000 miles per hour. Major Pearson became the only pilot to destroy a satellite and get credited for the kill. In 2007, his son, USAF Captain Todd Pearson, flying in the same aircraft, performed a remembrance flight marking the then 22nd anniversary of the historic shootdown. The F-15 is equipped with a look-down, shoot-down radar system that reduces ground clutter while detecting fast-moving, low-flying targets. 
Initial F-15 examples were configured with the APG-63 radar. The APG-63 was revolutionary for its time, having been the world's first programmable signal processor or PSP radar, meaning that the radar could be reprogrammed to work with newer weapon platforms as they became available. APG-63s were upgraded to the APG-63V1 version, which was a 1990s redesign. The APG-63V2 and later V3 variants incorporated Actively Electronically Scanned Array or AESA technology. Unlike mechanical radars which have to physically move a radar dish to scan different parts of the sky, AESA radars use an electronic dish which can maneuver a beam nearly instantaneously to acquire targets. With radar acquisition ranges of 100 miles, the F-15 radar can track over a dozen targets and attack six simultaneously. When a target gets close, the radar tracks it automatically. And finally, the F-15's defensive electronic systems provide radar warning and automatic countermeasures against selected threats. The largest single operator of the F-15 is the United States Air Force. Other operators include Israel, Japan, and Saudi Arabia. The Eagle is a fourth generation fighter with an extensive and unparalleled combat record. In the next upcoming video in the F-15 series, we will take a closer look at the impressive tally this legendary fighter has racked up. What do you think? Is the F-15 one of the greatest fighters of all time? Is it the greatest? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to help me keep making more videos like this one. Stay safe everyone, and see you next time.